And if you do go, take some pictures if you can, so you can share it with the class. I'll be going in the next few weeks myself. Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about positioning of the humerus, guys. We've got a lot of positions to go through for the shoulder girdle, and we are going to start right here at the humerus. So when we talk about the most common routine projections, that's going to focus primarily on the AP and lateral, which you guys have all done in lab, and that special projection called the transthoracic lateral humerus. So I don't know if you guys learned this in lab yet or not, but who can tell me under what circumstances would we ever want to do a transthoracic lateral humerus? What would be the point of that? What makes it special? If there's trauma. What, what kind of trauma? If they cannot rotate the hand internally or external. Basically, basically, it's just another way of getting that lateral humerus. If there's like a really bad fracture in their arm, they just can't move it at all. We'll actually acquire that humerus by shooting through the torso. Obviously not the most ideal picture, but in those extreme cases where that humerus is just all jacked up and they can't get a good view, that's another alternative that we can do. That's what we call it a special projection. But if possible, we always want to opt for that normal AP and lateral exam. That's going to be the superior views. So let's start with our AP right here. And I got a lot of these positions, some nice little charts for you guys, make it a little easier to read. I hope that's a little more helpful. But when we're talking about the AP projection of the humerus, this can be performed either AP, I'm sorry, supine or erect. It will always be AP, but it can be done supine or erect. Preferably done erect. That's the more preferred uh, version of that x-ray. But in those cases, that patient just cannot stand. We, of course, can acquire that while they're lying flat on the back as well. So we talk about the actual position of that part. We are going to extend that arm completely out in front of us, almost as if we were doing a forearm x-ray standing straight up. At the same time, you want to make sure that humerus is nice and flush against that IR, like in the picture right here. Here's my laser pointer. There we go. Like this lady saying right here, you want that humerus nice and flat, because a lot of people make the mistake of putting OID behind that arm, and that's going to magnify that humerus. And the humerus in particular, is a very long bone. And we want to reduce that OID as much as possible to get that whole humerus on one film. That's, that's We prefer one film over two, obviously. In those cases where we just can't fit it, we could do like an upper and lower humerus, but we want to opt for trying to get it all on one. How do we achieve that? Proper positioning by making sure that arm is flat against the IR, reducing that OID, and the proper positioning as well. What else do we do as far as the positioning? Epicondyles must be parallel. So you can palpate those epicondyles on the, um, on the elbow of the patient to make sure they are nice and parallel. And make sure that hand is supinated. Once again, just like we're doing an AP forearm, like we're standing up, we're we'll focused on the humerus. It's going to ensure that arm is in a true AP where you don't have any laterality or obliquity going on on that exam. SID will be 40 inches, just like everything that we're doing this chapter. Now, the CR will be a perpendicular beam, zero-degree angle, and it's going to be entering right at the mid-humerus. Not an exact landmark, so you almost got to estimate that one a little bit, but the exact location is what they call the mid-humerus, halfway between the elbow and the shoulder. That would be mid-humerus. There are breathing instructions on this exam. Very important to remember. We do want the patient to suspend their respiration before we take this x-ray, and the reason for that is... Even though we want to collimate most of the chest off on this x-ray, oftentimes the chest will be slightly included on this x-ray. We want to suspend the respiration so that the air is not going to overtake all the x-rays and take away from the quality of the humerus. So even though we should have that nice tight collimation and collimate that off, every once in a while we're going to have a little bit of that lung field on there. The less air present, the better that humerus x-ray is going to look overall. Thus is why we suspend the respiration on that humerus x-ray. IR size, you are always going to use a 14 by 17 lengthwise, not crosswise, lengthwise. Once again, we're dealing with a very long bone, the humerus, and we want to use that large cassette in the hopes that we're going to include the entire humerus on that x-ray, which can be quite difficult because we must include the elbow and the shoulder joints on that x-ray for that entire humerus to be included. And then we're going to collimate to the soft tissue specifically in the hopes of getting a lot of those ribs and lungs off. And this can be done either on the wall bucky or table bucky or tabletop, should it be on a stretcher. So we're talking about doing either standing up or laying down. And then every exam we're talking about here today, guys, in this chapter, we're going to always have the gonadal shielding on every single one of those. Make sure it's on the anterior surface of the body because we are doing AP procedure. 
Now, I don't know if you guys do this in lab, but one thing that I personally do, I wish there was a way I could demonstrate this. I actually will turn my tube so it's diagonal and the lights actually go in diagonal and I'll actually position the arm within that diagonal field. I have found personally that that's a little easier to get the whole humerus on there, but I don't want that to confuse you. If I can find a picture of what I'm talking about, I will show you. That's my personal method for doing my AP humerus x-ray. Um, you guys do it in lab like it shows in the picture right here? Or did you guys turn the tube? You just did it straight up like that? Okay, just making sure. Okay, that, and that's, per that's perfectly fine. By the way, for marker placement, guys, where they put the marker right here, that's usually the best location right by the shoulder. It's going to guarantee that you have it in the light field and you're not going to actually put it in any anatomy or risk cutting it off. So that corner right by the shoulder would be a wonderful place to put that marker. And this is just showing you if we were going to do it on the table, we're positioning them the exact same way. The only difference is they're laying flat on their back and we're doing it supine. This arm is still straight out like a forearm. We're still staring at the exact same points. Everything's exactly the same as standing. We're just laying down as an alternative if they just can't stand for us. Now for evaluation criteria, and this is a beautiful humorous x-ray by the way, I love this picture. We do want that entire humerus demonstrated from both joints, shoulder joint, all the way down to the elbow joints. The greater tubercle does need to be in profile. We achieve the greater tubercle being in profile by having the hand supinated. That's very important to remember. If the hand is supinated, like it would be for a forearm, that greater tubercle will naturally fall into profile position, which we see right here on the x-ray. We also want our medial and lateral epicondyles in profile. If you remember our epicondyles, they're right here at the distal portion of the humerus, close to the elbow. We want that medial in profile and that lateral in profile as well. And we do achieve that, once again, by having that hand supinated with that arm straight out in front of us. It's going to put both those areas, that greater tubercle and both epicondyle in profile position, which is a fancy way of saying that they're put into a true lateral position, essentially. And, of course, good exposure factors. Now, why do I like this x-ray? I love the collimation on this x-ray. You'll notice this x-ray has no lungs on it. Most techs, and I say it's a lazy techs, don't bother to collimate on their humerus x-rays, and they get a lot of lungs and ribs on there. It actually brings the quality of this x-ray way down. And we want this humerus to be the primary focus of our x-ray. Obviously, that's why we're doing a humerus x-ray. If I include a lot of lungs on there, this is going to get very blurry and mottled and ugly. The detail is not going to be there. So as much of that chest you can clip off without clipping the humerus, always make sure to do that, as well as clipping this extra light on the side here. A lot of people just leave it wide open. We've got all the extra light on the lateral side, all the lungs on the medial side, and that humerus gets lost in translation, so to speak. It's very fuzzy, very ugly. Real just doesn't, look, doesn't like it, and as a tech, you shouldn't want to turn something like that in anyway. So tight collimation is a must on these x-rays. And on that subject... You only ever want to collimate horizontally on this x-ray unless they have a very short arm. You can almost always afford to leave that collimation open vertically because the humerus is so long, and you do want to include both those joints on that exam. And like I said, if there is that rare chance, well, I shouldn't call it rare, it happens quite a bit, that you do clip the upper, like the proximal or distal portion of the humerus, you go ahead and do like an upper and lower humerus x-ray. You wouldn't just try to repeat and do it all in one, just would offer an upper and lower, which we kind of do on the femur as well when we get to the femur x-rays. But you should try to get it all in there for that first time. You, know, we, you will achieve that if you have an open collimation and you're centered nicely on that mid portion of the humerus and you have good positioning and good collimation. It should all be on there just fine. And by the way, we'll review this, but make sure that you keep that anatomy of that elbow fresh on your mind because, as you can see, it is very clear on our humerus x-rays. All this down here is fair game as well for image review. So we're just adding more to it. So make sure you review that elbow anatomy. All right, so when we talk about a lateral humerus, there are multiple ways that we can acquire a lateral humerus. The primary method is what you see right here, which is what we call a lateral medial projection of the humerus. Preferably done erect, but can also be done lying down, much like the AP. Now, as far as the position for this one, the easiest way to position for this x-ray is simply have the patient stand with their arm by their side and turn the hand internally. As you see the lady demonstrating here in the x-ray, turn that hand in internally, 
And that's going to put the humerus in a natural, true lateral position. Not the only way we can do it, but one of the easiest ways, in my opinion. So we do want that humerus completely extended. Hand is what they call pronated, but it's an internal rotation. We're pronating the hand by turning it internally. And we want the epicondyles superimposed. So you would want to palpate your patient's epicondyles at the elbow to make sure they are right on top of each other. Once again, that's telling us we have a nice true lateral. We're still at that 40 inch SID and we still have a perpendicular V. We're still entering at the same exact location, which would be the mid humerus, the mid humerus, whether we're doing AP or lateral. And much like the AP as well, we want to go ahead and suspend that respiration, have them just stop breathing. Because if you're going to be one of those lazy techs, it leaves your collimator filled open. You want to have as little air in those lungs as possible to make sure that your humerus is going to pop on that x ray. Still using a 14 by 17 lengthwise cassette because it is that long humerus. Collimating horizontally, preferably not vertically, to make sure that you have that entire arm on there. Using the wall bucky, tabletop, or wall uh, or table bucky is all acceptable, but the wall bucky standing is going to be the preferred method. And much like everything else we've been doing, of course, we want that gnatal shielding on the front of the body that you see demonstrated on that picture right there. Overall, pretty easy competency to acquire once you guys get through with that this um, next week. Humorous x-rays do come in quite often. The easiest way to get those x-rays, though, is those, that AP that I just showed you and the lateral done just like this. You will see multiple methods demonstrated by text, but in my experience, that's the easiest method you see right there for getting a nice, true lateral of that humorous. Just make sure you collimate in good. And you're not clipping those joints. So we do need both those joints demonstrated, just like the AP. And with, what's great about your marker, you actually don't even have to move your marker between the projections. They both go in the exact same spot that you see right here. As long as it's in your light field, you're not clipping it off when you collimate. Okay, this is an alternative way here to do a lateral. Personally, I don't know why anyone would want to do a lateral like this, but it does exist. So the only difference is we're going to be turning the patient in the other direction. This is going to be called a mediolateral projection of the humerus. And how do we do this one? Preferably, we're going to do it erect. In fact, it is completely preferred to be erect because doing this on the table would be a nightmare. We're going to slightly oblique the patient to almost a 45-degree angle. And we're going to rest that humerus on the film like you see right here. We're also going to turn the tube into a diagonal direction, kind of like I talked about earlier, in the hopes of getting that nice true lateral. We abduct the humerus and we flex the elbow slightly, and we still want those elbow, um, those epicondyles to be completely superimposed. We're still entering the exact same location, which would be mid-humerus, using that perpendicular beam. And much like every humerus x-ray we've talked about, you're going to suspend the respiration in case the lungs do show up on your x-ray. Still 14 by 17 lengthwise, even though you're going to turn your tube to that diagonal direction to make sure it lines up with the humerus. We collimate it down just to the elbow itself. I'm sorry, just to the humerus itself, down to that soft tissue. Um, once again, preferably standing at the wall, Bucky. You would not want to do this on the table. It would be a nightmare. But do know this is an alternative to doing a lateral humerus, but not what I would call ideal at all. Overall, pretty difficult x-ray to acquire in this fashion. I don't suggest doing it this way at all. In fact, I would opt for the transthoracic lateral over this personally. Most people should be able to get that humerus in a lateral position with that first method I just showed you, even if their arm is hurt quite bad. So make sure you know during those two, by the way, if you see those pictures, where's my, this is what we call lateral medial. The next one is what we call medial lateral. So it switches on you depending on what direction the patient's standing. So if they look like they're PA and oblique, that's medial lateral. Versus the AP with the lateral would be the lateral medial. And then the other way, of course, would be lying down. Uh, is what we call the lateral humerus recumbent rotational lateral. Very similar to that first layer I showed you guys. The only real difference is we're once again laying down instead of standing up. We're still turning that hand internally the exact same way. Just the only difference there is that they're lying flat on their back. 
In fact, the criteria is exactly the same for this entire projection right here. We're just laying down recumbent in a supine position. Femoris is still extended. We still look for those epicondyles to be superimposed. You want to palpate on the patient's elbow just to make sure. Hand is pronated or turn internally. Turn it internally. It puts it in that true lateral. Still entering that mid humerus. We're still suspending the respiration just in case those lungs do show up on that x ray. 14 by 17 lengthwise, collimating just down that soft tissue. And then they don't put a mark, they didn't put a marker on there, but you'd put your marker in that same spot right above the shoulder in that light. Your best spot to put your marker. Canadal shielding still in the exact same spot. We're just using our table bucky instead of staying that patient up. Perpendicular being no angle. This will be our recumbent supine AP humerus, lateral humerus. The chart's a little easier to follow. The charts help. I'm probably going to start doing them all like that. Okay, so for evaluation criteria, now this includes all three of those of you we just talked about. So now, no matter what kind of lateral humerus we're talking about, this is the evaluation criteria for all three of those positions. We, of course, want the entire humerus demonstrated on that x-ray. That's from the head of that humerus all the way down to those epicondyles at the elbow. We do want the lesser tubercle in profile, and that is achieved by turning that hand internally or pronated. It puts that lesser tubercle completely in profile. And those super, superimposed epicondyles which we see down here. Now, one great indication, guys, on x-ray that you have a true lateral at your elbow. You have those epicondyles superimposed. And you see that circle there? It actually makes a circle. When you see that circle on the epicondyles, it's a good indication that you have a nice true lateral. So you definitely look for our laterals for elbows and humerus and forearms, for that matter of fact. Then good exposure factors, good collimation. I love this collimation. This is a beautiful lateral x-ray. Only got a little bit of the lungs on there, which is sufficient. But the main star of that x-ray, as it should be, is that lateral humerus that we see right here. And once again, just make notes. All that shoulder girdle anatomy we just went over is right here. All our elbow anatomy is still down here. So if you really had some trouble with that elbow anatomy, make sure you're still reviewing that because there is quite a bit of overlap there on those x-rays. Okay, that's a good stopping point for today, guys. Only got about five minutes left. I'm not going to get into this one yet because there's a lot to talk about. So I will stop right there. So the plan is on Wednesday for us to wrap up the rest of this chapter, and then we will prepare and get ready for our next big um, image review and chapter test coming next week. So I will be sending you guys, I'll be looking to your email, I'm going to send you guys some practice images probably tomorrow. Um, also, I'm going to send you guys a practice chart that has all of our positions on it. And it's something great that you start filling in as we go through these positions. It's a great thing to use for a study guide for positions specifically. So I'm going to send that to you as well. So I'd recommend going through and filling in what we talked about today. I'll send you guys the PowerPoint thus far. And as we go over these positions on Wednesday, you can fill in your chart. It, helps. it works great for taking notes. So I'll send it to you guys as well. All right. Are there any questions, guys? I have to confirm this Friday. We have uh, image preview test, and next Monday we have test lecture. Test. The image review test should be on Monday. Image, image review test Monday and chapter test on Wednesday. Okay. Yes. So I have the whole weekend to study. Okay. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. We will have the patient care test on Friday, if that's what you're referring to. Yes. So that's coming on Friday. All right, guys, if there's no more questions, have a fantastic evening. Have a good day at clinic tomorrow, and I will see you guys bright and early on Wednesday. Have a good one, guys.